Next we have Rob Minan from Penn State. He's going to talk about survey of Pennsylvania manure hauler and broker certification program. Thank you, Melanie. Perhaps instead of Keller's, if we did that assessment at Waste Worth, we could have, you could be your own kind of poop, you know? Some of us could be poultry and some of us could be swine. You could adapt this, I believe. Um, I'm going to talk about my own relationship with the Munro Hauler uh, certification program in Pennsylvania. We have a certification program, and I'm going to give you a little background on it, and then get into a survey that we did uh, in 2018, a year ago. <laughs> Brief history. The Menorah Hauler certification began uh, as a law that was formed in 2004 called Act 49, so we often refer to this as the Act 49 uh, Menorah Hauler certification program. The uh, Act was put in place as a way for Pennsylvania to close what was often referred to as a manure export loophole. With our uh, nutrient management program that started in the 90s, the law required CAFOs and, and other, some other larger farms by density to have an official state nutrient management plan. But whenever that farm exported manure, there was no uh, plan required to go with that. And that, that manure then therefore did not get tracked, was not always applied at a, at a proper rate, etc. There were some things there that were a loophole. So for instance, someone might have a million uh, bird laying facility and their brother might uh, form a business separate from the laying operation to, to, to do the, uh, the cropping. Now we have one business exporting to the other and we have the regulations kind of stop. So part of that uh, nutrient management program was updated and part of that came into this manure hauler certification. It's for commercial manure haulers and brokers. Um, the certification actually began in October of 2006. It took a little bit of time to get the wheels to all come together. And during that time, once the law was passed, we had a really good uh, conversation with our manure haulers, brought them into uh, an organization called Pan Ag Industries, which has an umbrella a network of agricultural organizations does great lobbying uh, efforts and really supports our communities. And the uh, council we formed is still ongoing. It's the smallest council within Pan Ag Industries. But it allowed the industry to, to look at the law and try to make the regulations that would meet the law be as favorable for them as they could. So it was really good to bring them to the table. If I had to go back in time, and had a crystal ball would have got them at the table in 2003 before the law was ever passed. All that boiled down to a reasonable five certification category. It's a little bit complicated, but it does work for the industry and proved to be a good design. So let me talk about these certification levels. We have three manure hauler level, commercial manure hauler levels, and two manure broker levels. Roughly defined, manure hauler level one, we often say is the trucker category. The truckers uh, cannot land apply manure. They transport it from one point to another. They work for somebody else. Some of them haul coal one direction and haul uh, manure back in another direction or they haul litter down to the mushroom industry near Philadelphia. Pennsylvania has the largest mushroom industry in the country um, and they use a lot of litter in that industry. So they don't land apply it, they just drop it off. The second one, uh, the, the uh, second bullet there, the manure hauler, I don't, uh, one, I don't see them in classes, right? So with this program, Department of Agriculture, State Conservation Commission does the administration on the agency side, and I do the uh, education contracted with them at Penn State. The, the hauler one just completes the checklist. They can get it online, they complete the checklist. I understand I should, you know, how to stack manure uh, and a, a number of things there, sign off, send $10 to the state and they're good for a year. Manure hauler two is referred to as the employee category. These folks have to work for somebody, so they need to be supervised. They can study a workbook, which they can get online or we can mail it to them. It's right now a 46-page workbook, has test question samples in it, um, so it's a pretty intensive uh, deal. They take that uh, you know, and look at it, study it a little bit. They go to a local county office and take a 25-point uh, quiz there. I don't ever see them uh, typically until they come for continuing education. I'll tell you about that in a minute. Hauler threes are the owners or managers. They uh, will super, are permitted to supervise others and they have to attend a state class. We always have that in Harrisburg, so we make them come to the center of the state and they attend a one day class, take a 35 point question. The two broker categories. The certification requirements for broker level one 
are the exact same as the Monroe Hauler 3. They take the same class, the same test. They just choose when they register on how they would like to uh, be registered. And a broker situation just means they can take ownership of the manure and determine its end use. Where is it going? And the farm they get it from will uh, be disconnected from those decisions. However, whenever we have that scenario, we have to supply what's called an NBS or nutrient balance sheet. And these brokers are certified to take ownership of the manure, but they cannot write the balance sheet. They have to have a certified plan writer, nutrient management plan writer, or another broker level two write it for them. Broker level two, the fifth category, these folks can uh, write a nutrient balance sheet because they take a second day of training and a second exam based on this nutrient balance sheet. Nutrient balance sheets are uh, at this level based on nitrogen and phosphorus basic application rates. They learn the setbacks, they learn how to do mapping, um, and then they can take an additional class to do rates based on phosphorus indexing. Any questions on that? So think of these categories as we go from the hauler, one, two, three, broker one, broker two, as least amount of contact with education to the most amount, least intensive to most intensive. Continuing education credits. With these categories, four of them come continuing education requirements. A CEC is worth uh, equivalent of one hour of education training. So you can see for hauler two, three, broker one, and broker two, we have uh, six, nine, nine, and 12 credits over three years. So in the three hour uh, increments, I'd have our uh, trainings in the winter at three hour clips and get them three, three credits. So if they come every winter, they typically get those, uh, those credits. And the broker twos have one that has to be specific to balance sheet writing. So I've been working with them since 2006, actually before that with a volunteer program. And I have never conducted a survey. I've never really quantified what do they know. So why did I do a survey last year? I wanted to benchmark their knowledge and see if I had educational shortfalls and identify future topics that we can talk about and also provide proof that the program's working. I want to talk to people in Harrisburg or ADC, people in the Chesapeake Bay. I can say, hey, here's some things that uh, we're doing well. So I administered a survey at our winter CEC events between uh, January 23rd and March 1 of 2018. I had 11 different events, three hour events that we were at and I incorporated this into the material. 11 questions gained uh, knowledge about the person. It was anonymous, but I found out what their certification level was. Are they an owner or an employee? Are they a supervisor or are they supervised? Do they work with liquid manure only, solid manure only, or both manures? A uh, number of years they were certified and the number of farms they worked with annually. After that, I had 18 knowledge-based questions to get a feel on what do they know. A lot of the questions were really basic and about half of them came right out of that worker uh, level two workbook. So at that time, on March 1st, the last day I gave the survey, we had 808 people, individuals, in the program. So if we look at the blue piece of pie, starting with hauler ones, that was 29% uh, of the industry. Hauler twos, the employee level, 37%, so that's 66% in those first two uh, categories, so two-thirds of the people are in those categories. Hauler threes are 17 percent, broker ones nine, broker twos uh, eight percent. So who took the survey? These are just percentages of the industry. So that grass graph showed you that, uh, what was it, 30, 29 percent of the industry's hauler ones. Out of those 29 percent, only 2.6 hauler percent of the hauler ones took the survey. That makes sense, right? I don't have to see them at continuing education credit, so they are not attending the classes where I administered the survey, and I expected that. But across those other levels, 26, 34, 24, and 42 percent of the people in those categories took the survey, so we had a really nice representation. Here's the subject matter that I asked questions on. The green ones are ones that they did well on in general. The red ones are ones that were red flags for me. The black ones are ones that were kind of neutral. So certification level and supervision, nutrient planning, ammonia volatilization, leaching, NMP requirements, phosphorus and erosion, water well, uh, application setbacks, stream setbacks, uh, winter ground cover requirements, winter definition as it pertains to manure application, emergency spill response, manure storage freeboard, uh, hydrogen sulfide, 
odor complaints, soil compaction, biosecurity risk, control of fly larvae uh, with poultry manure, and then loads of field cal calculation. Multiple choice questions? They were multiple choice, Glenn, yeah. So you can get a feel for the categories we look at. I also created a graph like this for each category. This is for the hauler one, or hauler three. You can see in that, uh, with each of those questions, I was able to say, hey, here's three that are really bad for this group. Identify that. And I was able to do that with each category. So one of the questions on gathering information, what type of manure do you work with? Across those four categories, I have dropped the hauler ones out of this because they were such a small representation. Uh, solid manure, only 30% of the industry, you only work with solid, 31 with uh, liquid and solid both, and 39% liquid only. So that's across all four. Now when I split that up and look at categories, hauler twos work a little bit more with liquid, right? The employees are working 44% of them with liquid. And as we move through into those broker categories, we see more and more people working with solid manure. The brokers are doing a lot more transport of solid manure because it's easier to move around. The poultry industry supports a lot of movement of, in, of this. So it wasn't, wasn't surprising to me, but it was kind of nice to see those graphs. Next, we asked people about uh, you know, the number of years you were certified. So across here, we have the number of years, and you'll see the big bar at 12. If someone wrote that they had been certified for 13 or 15 years, that to me indicated they were certified in our volunteer program and I bumped them down to 12 so they would match the certification year. So across there you can see we have a, you know, a lump on each end and when we break that down by a category, the hauler twos have a lot less experience and their average was four years. The uh, hauler threes are kind of split. Brokers and on both, end, both broker levels have a nice lump toward the end. They have a lot more experience. Um, so on the knowledge questions, 18 knowledge questions, how did they score? The combined score in yellow on the far end there, the average score was 78.7. But you can see from hauler two through broker two, we had a 75, 79, 84, and another 84% uh, percent correct. So the, the broker twos know more. They're also in the industry longer. Also looked at this. Now these are not significant, but they, I thought they were a decent graph to look at. In the question of are you an employee or are you an owner, this is how people average across all the categories. You can see the black dot, uh, if we project the expected score, is the 95% uh, it is the, is the is 95 percent confident range uh, in the bar. So we have the expected score and then the 95 percent confident range. So although it's not significant, we can see that there is a difference. Similarly, uh, I made a similar graph for are you supervised or are you not supervised? Are you a supervisor or a supervisee? And people that supervise seem to know more than the people that they supervise. And these are good things, right? The owners who's sending a crew out, the supervisor who's sending a crew out, we feel our education is enabling them to help their employees or the people they're supervising make better decisions. And uh, you know, the education is showing that the longer in the program, the more you know. This graph is the average number of farms worked on annually. You can see the categories of what people uh, put on as the number of farms average. But across the industry, these four categories work with an average of 38 and a half farms per year. So when we enable somebody to make good decisions, give them a little more knowledge, teach them about you know, ground cover or nitrogen cycling or safety, and they get in the field, they're, they're making impacts with their decisions across 38 farms. That's a lot of farms and a lot of acres. Now, some of these people could be in the same, uh, same business, right? So if I'm working with my, my co-employee and we both build a survey out, we might put down the same 38 farms. They might be on some of the same farms, but they each are impacting those farms. I have lots of time to talk. So um, I'm, I'm wrapping things up, don't we? Um, some concluding thoughts, right? Surveys, uh, distribution matched my expectations. I expected there to be very few hauler ones. We had very few. 
and then the distribution didn't surprise me too much because I've worked with this industry so long. Whenever we have a meeting, right, and you look at that distribution, some of these people now have been with me for uh, 16, 18 years, right, since I got to Penn State. Some of them just took their Holler 2 test last week. So my goal with every meeting that I do is to raise the bar for everybody. So I have somebody who's just learning and I have somebody who's been here a long time and I want to give a message in every presentation I do with them that helps each of them at some level. And then maybe gives that supervisor and that employee uh, you know, some room to talk and maybe learn together. And I think it really does pay off. My observation is that the uh, community has embraced certification unlike they had uh, at the beginning and really come into an acceptance and accepts the fact that they are professionals and need to move forward. The next point here, uh, we, did, we did target, uh, identify areas of target for future programming. And uh, you know, we have some things already started on that with some field days we have coming up. Our CECs are a classroom, but also a number of times we do field day events. Total score distribution was as expected. I expected and hoped that the longer you were in the program, you would know more. Uh, owners and supervisors each know more. Act 49 certification education appeared to positively influence performance on questions centered around state directed educational competencies, both certification level and the years in the program positively relate to uh, score. With an average of 38.5 farms worked on per uh, person, that's pretty impactful. I can take these type of numbers and things and have great conversations with our agencies and our decision makers as we move forward with uh, ever increasing Chesapeake Bay uh, pressure driving things that happen in Pennsylvania. This allows me to do that as, as mentioned in number seven. And finally, uh, we just submitted a manuscript last week, so it hasn't even been reviewed yet on this, so hopefully sometime later this year uh, with this, I, I, I will have a, a, an article out there. I just see what the coaches did to me. Hmm? So anyhow, I'm going to find out what this says. It's nice to be loved. <laughs> huh? Well, I had somebody promise me they were going to get me back, and I'm glad it happened quick and, and, and painlessly. <laughs> Yeah, when Mary said you're hovering around me, I knew a little while ago that something was up. However, you know, whenever we're looking at scores on tests, there are some people here that score highly in my world. <laughs> so, Glenn and Mary and Tang, I all make my honor roll. So, I was able to uh, get beat to the punch. I had another one for you. So. Hey, any questions for any of <laughs> <laughs> Any questions for Rob? <laughs> you must have covered the topic very well. Okay, good. <laughs> <laughs>